While the pipeline is running though, it's time for a meeting. This is important to understand that disruptions in any type of coder's day uh, can be expensive in terms of ramp up. That's because when switching context, you're stopping what you're doing in one place and some of the details you just can't keep all in memory. And so you're gonna have to ramp back up into whatever you're doing. And you're also gonna have to try to take it and move it from your mind to have a brand new discussion. That's why we really wanna try and limit these types of interruptions to as few as possible throughout the workday. In this case at 1 p.m., we're discussing a new feature. And so in this case, the meeting is led by the product owner who's responsible for the product and, or the software in question. And it's regarding wanting to do something new in the system. Hey, we want to have SMS notifications, meaning whenever our product is actually delivered, we want to notify anyone who subscribed via their cell phone that their delivery has arrived and possibly information with it. So the lead dev here chimes in, uh, we don't have this right now. We're going to need an SMS provider. So if you're not familiar with it, an SMS provider, a common one, for example, is mBlocks, is a piece of third-party software responsible for delivering text messages via the entire worldwide network to individual cell phones. They handle all the complexity for you. As the QE, we chime in and say, wait a minute, we send a lot of purchase orders. So in order to test this, it's gonna cost us you know, 10, 12 cents per message. This is gonna get really expensive really fast. So we're probably gonna to wanna to talk about in lower environments, not sending real text messages and maybe using a simulator of sorts. The scrum master hearing this says, this sounds like a lot of work, we probably should have a spike. Uh, a spike is agile terminology for what is a research project? That's because we're gonna to need to do a little bit of a research project to figure out how much work is actually required. The discussion continues on and it starts with, let's just quantify this from a user scenario. This is sometimes where the quality engineer can help out the product owner because the quality engineer thinks in terms of given, when, then. There's that Gherkin Foreman again. This is the very programmatic way to understand interactions with any system. In our case, as a team, we came together and we said, okay, how does text notification work from a user perspective? Well, given that a user is subscribed for delivery notifications, when a product is delivered, then the user receives text notification. The architect already brought up an SMS provider, so we're gonna have to pick and vet some vendors for how we wanna work with that. This can be either a small or a big ass, depending on the size of your company, because if you're using a third party service, somebody somewhere is gonna to have to approve and pay for that, because this is never gonna be free in the case of text messages. Additionally, this is gonna be a minor addition to the architecture. We're now talking about adding a third party into our current system. And so we're gonna to wanna to vet that as well. And then as the QE, we brought up you know, we can't just spam ourselves with text messages every time we run a test suite. So we're gonna have to consider writing some sort of SMS simulation technology so that we can pretend to send text messages, but then also check on the text messages that would have been sent. The important part here from this feature discussion is that we've defined a feature uh, from a scenario perspective, and we also have come up with these three different aspects that will need to be worked out. This is where the scrum master or project manager will then take this, define some of the work in the work tracking system, and then prioritize when or if we're gonna take this on. 